1973, Eric Anton Paul von Däniken would publish a book that would change the world. Because of this publication, Eric is thought of as the pioneering advocate of the ancient astronaut theory. He was solely responsible for bringing the ancient alien hypothesis to public attention. His book, Gold of the Gods, included extensive research regarding a lost and very ancient city buried beneath most of Ecuador. In the book, he would detail talks with a man known as Janos Juan Moritz, a figure who had managed to extensively explore the abandoned ancient underground tunnel systems. The entrance to this forgotten world is entered through the Cueva de los Teos, the Teos Cave. While exploring, Janos claimed to have stumbled across a secret passage which led to rooms filled with mounds of golden jewels and coins and a golden sarcophagus placed within an intact ancient metallic library, containing books made from a strange metal. Janos's research suggested that the golden fortune, along with the sarcophagus and metallic library located within the artificial tunnels, had been placed there by a lost civilization with the help of extraterrestrial beings. Did Janos Juan Moritz actually stumble upon an ancient alien tomb? A tomb which had managed to survive many thousands of years without being disturbed? Not only were the claims within von Däniken's book taken seriously, they resulted in the most expensive cave exploration ever undertaken. Stan Hall from Britain commenced upon this expedition in 1976 with the goal of finding the golden artifacts and hopefully an alien corpse. The expedition included over 100 people, including experts in a variety of fields, British and Ecuadorian military personnel, a film crew, and even former astronaut and first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong. The team also included eight experienced British cavers who thoroughly explored the riskier of ancient tunnel systems, successfully conducting an accurate survey of the complex, producing a detailed map of the buried city. Unfortunately, Little evidence of von Däniken's more exotic claims was found, or remained. It is always a possibility that funded tomb robbers made it there first. It took over a year for Stan Hall to organize his team, a year which experienced a flurry of public attention directed towards what can only be described as drastically consequential claims. What's more, compounding evidence of the artifact's existence unearthed from these exact cave systems has miraculously been documented in the past. Not only had some of these mythical items been recovered, the artifacts had been bought and collected by a man known as Father Crespi. Father Crespi is considered a saint by some. He was born in Milan, Italy in 1891 and died in 1982. He was a Salesian monk who dedicated his life to worship and charity. He actually lived in the small town of Cuenca in Ecuador for more than 50 years. He did not have much wealth, but what he did have, he used to help the less fortunate. He was an avid collector of what could now be classified as impossible artifacts. He would encourage those who needed money to bring him whatever items they could find within the jungles, and he would pay them for their troubles. Although some are crude forgeries, he still paid them for their efforts. Some, however, brought to him from within these cave systems collaborate the stories of Eric von Däniken. Not only did these particular artifacts collaborate the story, but they were often made from solid gold, exhibited language and visually illustrated culture of an as yet unknown but clearly highly developed ancient civilization. The collection also included several metallic books, inscribed with an exquisite unknown language. Upon Father Crespi's death, his collection was looted by unknown peoples. All artifacts of interest were replaced with obvious forgeries or simply stolen. Upon returning from their unsuccessful expedition, the lead researcher met with Janos Moritz's indigenous source, who claimed that they had investigated the wrong cave. Had the source been paid for his silence? What is interesting is the fact that the team's efforts were not entirely fruitless. Characteristics of the cave systems they explored match that of the descriptions given by von Däniken. What's more, they actually unearth zoological, botanical, and archaeological features, items which are unexplainable for the geographical location, unless it was visited by a group of people capable of traveling the seas far before Columbus. 
What do you think of the Teos Cave's legendary golden burial chamber? Was it all a hoax? Or did somebody get there first? A little over a year ago, we shared the story surrounding a mysterious discovery that was once claimed to have been made deep within cave systems within Ecuador, which some believe were originally man-made. A discovery that, although now concealed from the world, was photographed, studied, and documented thanks to the array of artifacts which had been amassed by an individual known as Father Crespi. An entire, seemingly alien metallic library, complete with hundreds of sheets of gold, platinum, and other precious metals, hammered out to reveal an astonishing unknown language, clearly left by a people of tremendous capabilities. The caves in which this find is claimed to have been made is known as Cueva de los Teos. And although such discovery is denied by the Ecuadorian authorities, the Ecuadorian and, interestingly, United Kingdom's governments funded an extensive search of the cave systems soon after the claims became public. It attracted the attention of numerous individuals who traveled into the depths of these caves, including Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon. What we wish to focus on this video, however, is the enormous, seemingly man-made caverns which are found to be within the cave systems. We feel, if these cave systems are indeed one day admitted as having been artificially hewn from the bedrock, then this would undeniably reveal tremendous flaws in academia's claims as to the geology and indeed true history of the area. The cave system is so enormous, it has yet to be fully explored by modern man. Yet what has been explored has revealed highly compelling features, which corroborate earlier claims of an artificial origin. The Moritza portal, for example, named after Juan Moritza, the individual who claims to have originally discovered the metallic library, is clearly of an artificial nature. The question is, why go to such lengths to construct this natural-looking cave system? Was it all created merely to hide this library? And if so, how important could the information held within be? And why did such a find attract the attention of the first man on the moon? Did the astronaut know something we are yet to discover? Juan Moritza signed affidavit dated 8th of July 1969 in which he confessed to a meeting with the Ecuadorian president, where he received complete control over his discovery, provided he could provide photographic evidence and an independent witness corroborating the discovery. When Moritza met with von Däniken in 1972, he took him to a secret entrance, through which they entered a large artificial hall within the cave system. Apparently, von Däniken never got to see the library itself. He wrote in his book, The Gold of the Gods, quote, The passages all form perfect right angles. Sometimes they are narrow, sometimes wide. The walls are smooth and often seem to be polished. The ceilings are flat and at times look as if they were covered with a kind of glaze. My doubts about the existence of the underground tunnels vanished as if by magic, and I felt tremendously happy. Moritza said passages like those extended for hundreds of miles under the soils of Ecuador and Peru." End quote. We feel the question now is, who went to these unimaginable efforts so far back within history? Why create such a place deep within the Earth with such an intended illusion of natural origin if you did not seek to hide something? Many still believe that the truth is still hidden deep inside its unexplored caverns, a truth that will force us to completely rewrite the history of mankind. Are the legends true surrounding Cuevo de los Teos? Did it once indeed contain an ancient metallic library, left to us by an ancient civilization? We find the evidence to suggest so highly compelling. We have in the past covered the fascinating legends and indeed recovered artifacts that have been found over the years within the Ecuadorian cave system 
known locally as Cueva de los Tayos. The legends of the cave nearly all surround hidden treasures of lost ancient and giant civilizations, including the posit of an ancient yet inexplicable library room made entirely from a curious metallic formula. With caves with an intrigue strong enough to even attract the attention of the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong, one began to wonder whether these legends be true. And when you bring Father Crespi's collection into the fold, the flurry of interest surrounding these legends, and indeed the artificial nature of some of the portions of the cave itself, all become easily explainable via such motives of discovery. Father Crespi, as the title would suggest, was a religious man and one who was highly philanthropic and also incredibly interested in the artifacts of antiquity. And fortunately for him and us, the location in which he lived was steeped in lost ancient artifacts, all just waiting to be recovered. Father Crespi was a man of modest wealth, and in return for curious artifacts, often found within the Taos cave, even reported to have given food in return for clear forgeries offered by hungry individuals, although he would offer more and often money, respective of the artifact's clearly historical value. This allowed Father Crespi to gather a literal hoard of authentic ancient artifacts, many clearly from this long claim to exist metallic library, his collection full of metallic plates of unknown writings and other fascinating metallic artifacts. The reason for our revisiting of these caves, and indeed the fascinating character that was Father Crespi, is our recent perusing of new information released on the cave, deliberately ignoring all aforementioned facts, including the artificial nature of some of the portions of the cave itself, in particular at entrances, as if reinforced with enormous ancient lintels. Unfortunately, all that remains of Father Crespi's collection that can be confirmed as 100% his and authentic now only exist within the photos taken of him with his collection prior to his death, whereas the hoard of artifacts was ransacked and many replaced with poor quality forgeries. Thus, it is a mystery and we believe conspiracy to conceal a lost history which we find incredibly frustrating.